Speaking of that. Cheers. Cheers, buddy. Are you ready to do this? What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Beers and Breakdowns. In this video, we're doing Tom Clancy's Without Remorse. I'm pretty excited about this one. I like Michael B. Jordan. Yeah. I think he's awesome. I think he crushed it in, um, fuck. Uh, Black Panther? Black Panther. I love Black Panther. It's so sad to me that that actor passed away mm -hmm. because really, really hoping for Black Panther 2 and 3 and fucking, I'm a huge Marvel fan. I love all those movies. I wish they would just keep coming out. Like, I want Guardians of the Galaxy 10. <laughs> like, it pisses me off that Fast and the Furious will make fucking 10 of them. <laughs> and those pieces of shits are the worst movies I've ever seen in my life. But they won't make 10 Iron Mans. They won't make 10 Guardians of the Galaxy. They won't make 10 Avengers. They always will stop at three. Well, and it's like, come on, just keep making them. We love them. They don't want to water it down. Ah, Maybe, them. you know. You know how that gets. Fast yeah. and Furious is kind of watered down a little bit. But I remember I was listening. I love it. I was listening to Joe Rogan. He's listen. He was talking to uh, C.K. Lewis or whatever, mm -hmm. and he's like, "Yeah, I made a movie." Guy's kind of arrogant. He's like, "I made movies. Like it wasn't an Avengers movie, so you know how that goes." <laughs> I'm like, "Are you fucking <laughs> hating on Avengers, bro? Yeah. Like it just because it's that fucking good? Those movies are fucking incredible. Yeah. Endgame was one of the best movies of all time. Haven't watched it yet." I haven't got there yet. I'm not going to jump to the end when I haven't seen most of the beginning and middle of the franchise. Look, I'm, an, I'm a, a Marvel newbie, right? I'm learning. I'm getting there. <laughs> Still here. Fuck, hang on. Nope. I try to respond to some of the, the Instagram comments. Are you blowing up on yours, on FNG? Yeah, so FNG, we get a lot, and I try to respond, but sometimes it takes a while. Sometimes Dude, I can't. And then, but you got to remember that I was getting, for a while, I was getting so many per day. And trying to respond to them, that I now I have a backlog. Yeah. Uh, and it goes out to like five months. And a lot of a lot of the questions are like kind of deep questions, long, so it's like it, it takes a, a while to respond. So. So when I respond to one, you gotta understand that to respond to one is to read an Instagram message that's literally this long, like page of page, of the st backstory of why, which is cool, right? But that one message takes me 10 minutes to like get through and then think of a response right yeah and then try to respond appropriately so that i feel like i'm giving that follower you know a good response instead of being like blowing them off right yep. and then going to the next one so sometimes i only get to one or two a day because they're all like this long and so i try my best but man i am backlogged so when i see a quick one where they're like real short i'm yep. just like oh thank god yes and then i go answer <laughs> real quick and then i can move on and then I'll pick one or two, but so just get, just know that we're trying to get to the the messages, but understand that we have a mentor program for a reason. Because of all those questions, we decided to start the mentor program. So that way we could have you guys meeting with us for an hour long, ask yeah. any questions you want. <clears throat> it's like the perfect program, and we're helping people. Kurt's got people that are three letter agency. There are guys that are going Ranger, you got guys that are going Green Berets, you got guys that... Um, Canadian Special Forces. Canadian Special Forces, another one. Uh, one of the things about Special Operations is it, it translates well throughout any different culture, community, uh, different countries, soft. It's the same principles, mm -hmm. the same mindsets, just being applied to different soft units. we got some guys that aren't even... Like they, they like the special operations community, but they're not really that interested in going that way. They're just looking for an edge in whatever they're doing. Well, yeah, and that's and, a, that's you know a lot of what we talk about is like mindset type mm -hmm. stuff and, and things like that. So, so I don't know how we got onto that. But. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> that wasn't meant to be. A, that started as a Marvel conversation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, let's move on to let's this movie. This. Tom Clancy's Without Remorse. That's where it started. Is Jordan uh, Michael B. Jordan? Michael B. Jordan, and then talking about him and uh, Black Panther, and then we went on to Marvel, and somehow got onto the mentorship program. Let's jump into the first scene and see what this thing's all about. Are these Navy Seals? Of course. <laughs> Oh, the seal reveal! Oh my god! Bro, you cannot have a seal movie without a seal reveal. Oh, and they're just shit. like, we're gonna open it up with the seal reveal, so oh. you know what we're doing. We need a shirt line of the seal reveal. That's awesome. That's a good idea. <laughs> we'll just come out, it would just come out of the water and it's a clown. <laughs> 
Oh, man. You got a fucking Ronald McDonald clown coming out of the water <laughs> like this, and it's like he's got knots seal on, reveal. and it says seal reveal. That's awesome. That shirt's coming to you guys yep, soon. coming soon. Holy shit, they literally put a fucking pool in the middle of a building just to do a seal reveal. <laughs> All right, so first off, I didn't think about that, right? How the fuck did the seals get into this pool in the middle of the building in the middle of the city? Right. So they're they're in Syria right now. And you got a campfire. So you've been sitting here <laughs> camping, cooking up your fucking food. And then at one point you decided it was time to kid up and go get in the water so you could do your seal uh, reveal. Because you knew at some point a fighter was going to come try to wash his face. Oh and you were like, God. I'm going to be ready for my seal reveal. Oh, just wait, just it's, wait. It's almost like those videos you see from Africa where like the gazelle goes to drink out of the water and yeah. the alligator is like, rawr, or the crocodile just grabbing them. Oh my God, but Navy SEALs. Just, you got to have a seal reveal in the movie. You cannot have a seal movie without that. You can't. They they even did it in uh, uh, Terminal List. They, they didn't yeah. have a puddle of water, so they just made a little waterfall. So they just, like, came out of the waterfall. Look, like, ah! I think it's, like, an unwritten rule for you the seal community. You have to have a seal reveal. It's like, if you're going to use seals in the movie... you got to like come doing, out of the water. You're doing the reveal, right? It's like, yeah, we'll find a way. Yeah, I feel <laughs> like the directors sit around and are like, you didn't have a successful seal movie? Did you do a seal reveal? No. <laughs> <laughs> Noob. <laughs> Fucking idiot. <laughs> Welcome to making seal movies, dipshit. We've been doing it for 22 years. Gosh, damn, that was the most embarrassing seal reveal. And it's not that it didn't look cool. I love the water shot. I love the pan up. But it's when you take the wide shot, it's so stupid. He's in a building in some, like, what at one point was probably this, like, flamboyantly rich guy's pool. Yeah. With a campfire next to the pool. And why are you in the pool? How did you get there? How with the you, scuba gear on. How did you, why did you put your scuba gear on when you're in a city and you're in a building? So there's no <laughs> Why did you bring it with gear. you? Why did you bring it with you? Why are you in a pool? Like, at least in, um, what was that other ridiculous movie? Uh, the, Act I of know Valor. Act, Act of Valor. Valor, yeah, yeah, yeah. So at least Act of Valor, the location was surrounded by water. So it makes sense that for an infill, yeah. you would have to do a seal reveal. But this guy literally found a pool to do a seal reveal. This is the most... Like if we if we wanted to make fun of seal reveal, we would replicate this scene. Wait, do you think that's something that seals just carry around with them at all time, like a mask or something, just in case they find water? Yeah, they take a dump it's pouch like, and oh. they fill the dump pouch with their goggles <laughs> and their oxygen. They're and walking with one of the one of those honing sticks that shows where water is. They're like, bro, water, <laughs> water. four hundred meters that way. <laughs> Guys, that's the wrong direction. There's, There's water. How are we gonna do a seal reveal if we don't find that fucking water? You're right, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is why new guys should never talk. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, man. Holy shit, dude. That well, was anyways, hilarious. I love this movie, but I thought that part was just That's like funny. completely outlandish. You found a pool to do a seal <laughs> review. Because you couldn't have just stood on the other side of this pillar and shot the guy in the face. Right. Let's go fucking diving. Hostage identity confirmed. It's him. Let's move. The hell is this, Ritter? He's the ex-Russian military. He says Syrian army, not Russians. So I, I thought that was cool, right? To see kind of like, you know, when they're going in and they're clearing the rooms, like you, you get to see a bit of the difference between, obviously they're doing a hostage rescue. So you're, the way you move is gonna be a bit different, right? So time is of the essence. So normally when you're doing CQB, it's going to be very methodical. You're going to have, like, everybody's going to go and do a very thorough clearing of the building, right? Each but, room as you progress throughout to make right. sure that behind you is all clear. So they had a brief we didn't get to see before this. So they knew where they were going. They knew where the hostage was or they had pretty good intel where he was. So their goal is to get in and get this hostage rescued. Yeah. So you see they're, they're losing a bit of security, but what they're gaining then is speed. Yeah. So and, the idea behind that is that if you do conduct CQB, you're 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 going in to uh, slow clear. Everyone in there is either going to be killed or captured. Mm -hmm. Everyone in there. With hostage rescue, it's not the case. So with hostage rescue, the idea is that you have a target. The minute you do a breach or pull your trigger, that hostage could be getting shot in the face. Yep. So if you have, let's say, a hostage that's you know hallway down make a right third room on the right 
if you start clearing all the way, all those rooms to try and get to that hostage, they're going to execute the hostage. It takes time. It takes too much time. So instead, uh, what hostage rescue tactics will be is we're going to just bypass security risks. We're going to bypass open doors. We're going to bypass rooms and we're going to move fast because the faster we move, speed is security, the harder it is to shoot us and they have to see us, identify us and shoot us. So if we move so fast that they have trouble doing that and get to that room where we know the, the hostage is, we protect the hostage mm -hmm. and then now we could slow it down. Yeah. Now we could fight our way out. We have the hostage secure, three guys deep. We got a bunch of amazing shooters. Now we could slow it down. We're not going to run back out with them, potentially. Maybe it, the situation could call for right. it. But ideally, you have the hostage. He's safe. He didn't get shot um, once they knew you were coming. So now we can slow down. Now we can kill on our way out mm -hmm. and make sure that we're protected. That doesn't mean we're going to clear our way out. Because fuck that, you're trying to get exfil as quickly as possible. But now you can slow down, and instead of running past an open door, you're going to stick a barrel in it, you know? And then your guys are going to bypass you. You're just going to change your tactics up a little bit. So one thing that I like that they did is they shut the fuck up. Yeah. I hate when they have military <laughs> movies and they talk, 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 talk. Yeah. Talk gives away all your security. Everyone knows where the fuck you are when you're rubbing up against the wall, when you're telling people, grab that guy, yeah. pull that guy. Clear right, clear, clear right, left. clear left. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. A good, a good team can communicate without speaking. Not a word. Like, you know what everybody's doing. They've run through this. They've rehearsed, rehearsed it. They've done it so many times. I know where you're, what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I know how you're going to react to this situation. Same thing with me. So that's one of those things like it comes with experience and a you know a tier one element like this. That's all they do. That's the difference between a tier two and a tier one. So if you take a, a group of Green Berets, and we've proven this, we've proven that Green Berets could uh, effectively operate as a tier one element. We've proven it with a CRIF unit. We had the CRIF. We had a fucking tier one capable element. And all the differences between a regular white side green beret and a criff and a tier one guy is that the tier one guys stay together they operate together all the time so if i do cqb with kurt all the time i know his weird ticks i know his good ticks. i know how fast he likes to go into the room i know how he operates so if i come up to him and i'm stacked and i squeeze on kurt I know if he's a jackrabbit and is going to run in that room. I know if he's a slow, methodical walker. So I'm going to adjust myself to him. We know each other. Mm -hmm. He can give me a nod. That's all I need to go. He can give me a no-go. That's all I need. He could point to his back. I know that he's saying to grab a flashbang. I'll get a flashbang and throw a flash. We don't need to communicate because we've worked together so much that we understand each other. So that's the difference between a regular SF unit and a tier one element. The tier one element's constantly working together and things don't change. A regular SF unit is not as good at CQB as a tier one element because we're always getting new guys. We're always having our senior guys leave to go do other stuff. We're having to incorporate foreign forces. Mm -hmm. So we have to incorporate host nation forces. So Afghans, Iraqis, whoever we're working with into our stack. So because the constantly changing environment of a regular Green Beret team, we can't get as efficient as a CRIF or a Tier 1 element. That's the only mm -hmm. difference. You could take a team of Green Berets and say, this is, this is how you, you make a Tier 1 element. You take a team of Green Berets and you say, no, none of you are getting off this team for three years. Yep. And no one's coming on this team for three years. For the next three years, it's only you guys and that's it. No foreign forces nobody else train and fight together and all of a sudden you will have the best fucking operating element on yeah. the planet because they they under, learn how to understand each other so that's long-winded sorry but it pisses me off because we differentiate all these like tier two tier one elements yeah. and the only fucking difference is that they have time to train together all, and they don't change out and their mission set is so narrowly focused like as a Green Beret, how many, we've got what, nine different mission sets yeah. that we have to focus on. So whenever you get time to train, you're like, oh, well, today we have to train on this mission set, yeah. you know, today we have to train on this. So you're not just doing DA or direct action every day. Right. You're having to split up your time. So you become very good or you become good at a lot knife. of things, but you don't become experts at any one thing. Right. And so that's why they call us a Swiss Army knife. It's yeah. Like we have 
a demo guy. We could build stuff. We could create structures. We could blow up structures. We do this. We could help you. We could take a force and train them and then take them with us. We're doing so much shit. We can't hyper focus and become experts on any one thing. So anyway, if you become really good at CQB and you become a tier one element, you don't need to talk. I know he, this guy can give me a fucking nod, this, no, this, one of these, and that just takes time. It takes time working together. Oh shit! Oh shit! <laughs> what the fuck? Bro, that was like one of the most brutal like getting hit by car scenes I've seen in a movie. Yo, how did they make that so real? I don't, like they fucking ran this guy over <laughs> for the Bro. movie. I don't know what just Someone happened. Someone needs to call the fucking ambulance. Like, is that actually Like, it okay? went over his face at the end. That was just crazy. So, yeah, so he's one of the guys from the team. They've since left the team. That was kind of like their last operation that they went on. And now this dude just got fucking hit and run in the middle of the street. And, of course, it's all tied to the CIA. This is supposed to be Russians thing. And yep. On my way, I just got stuck in the. Jesus, man, come on! Where are you coming from? Um. I was at Happy's, some of the boys. Another boys' night with your baby seals? Yeah, please don't start. This is making me feel better about my car scene. What the? What did you just see? So. First of all, like how the timing is crazy. The timing that he can get in front of him and then be stopped. And then he jumps out. He jumps out and then starts just snapping the dude to assassinate him. The only critique I would have just watching that quick clip is the, why would you get out? Why would you give people the opportunity to see that you're a white male, six feet two, Maybe just pop the doors open. Just pop the doors open. I would stay in the back. I would still have my face covered. Mm -hmm. um, did he have license plates on the vehicle? On the van? Yeah. Probably, but I mean, they could be it's stolen or whatever. I would remove the license plates. Listen, as, from a, especially from a police officer's perspective, why have license plates on at all? Maybe so they don't draw attention from the police? But think about I it. I don't know. Yeah, that, ideally, like, if you take your license plates off, you run the risk of getting pulled over, right? But what are the odds of getting pulled over compared to when you start shooting at somebody getting recorded? So my thing with that scene is there in stop and go bumper to bumper traffic. Ah, he's got nowhere to go. So you open the door, you're like, <laughs> pop, 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 get in. <laughs> I, didn't even, I didn't even think about that. They're in Atlanta. Atlanta yeah. has terrible traffic. And they're bumper to bumper. You're right. You're right. That's fucking ridiculous. something right. Yep. I just love this scene with the flashlight. Oh, that's beautiful. Michael B. Jordan, man. I'm not fucking man. No, dude. How about I that? With this dude. How about his like clearing techniques? Yeah. Just like you were talking in the other movie, like going through yeah, not white, white light the yep. whole time, yep. just when he needs it. Just when he needs it. So, and he already knows his house. Yes, yes. That's the point is like when we talked about this is a different movie breakdown. But in the last one we talked about, we tried to do that white light occasional thing. And it's super difficult. And especially if there's no loom mm -hmm. outside. So you don't have some idea of what's going on around you. You're trying to get snapshots and then see and then snapshots. But this one is used perfectly because it's his, his house. He knows where to go. I could walk around my house at night without any issue. I know yeah. where to go. So then he snaps on some white light to check and then turns it back off. So he's doing the police hold. Yeah. Um, we ha I forget what it's called, but we have two police holds for your gun and your flashlight. One is to hold like this, so that way you can control the light and shoot. The other one is to hold like this, so you get uh, fist to fist, and then you could control your light and shoot. Uh, the right way is to have a gun light. Yeah. <laughs> So that way you don't have to do any of that shit. 
Um, but there's names for those techniques. That there's a this is called something and this is called something. You know another one they taught us in Cephalic, which they showed us. They're like, uh, give it a try, see if you like it. Mm -hmm. And the reasoning was was because that generally if you have a light and somebody you have somebody else that's trying to shoot back at you, they're going to shoot at the light. Mm -hmm. So the other one was to be like this with yep. the light and, and then shoot. Yeah, which is so another technique they taught us. I didn't really like it as much as as this one, um, but. You know, Police department teaches that too. You could you could turn it on up here and then shoot. Yeah, but not ideal. The police departments don't do that anymore. All that stuff is taught because old school used to have to hold the light, mm -hmm. but now we have gun lights. So yeah. all that stuff is obsolete now. Yeah. We just have our gun light. Flick it on. Do I have my gun light on those? I yeah. do. It's a single hand motion at that point. Yeah. So right here I have. All right. So right here I have my primary pistol. It's a Glock 19. I have the Magwell extended magwell it keeps my hand nice and compressed into uh, up into my trigger guard so it's nice and tight i got the tlr ho1 which is just what a lot of cops use i got a um com uh what is it called the compensator compensator on the front i forget who makes this one oh radian i got a radian compensator on the front and then i have the um crimson trace uh rad pro optic they sent me that, I fucking love this optic. And so I know that Crimson Trace hasn't, they've been looked at like maybe they're cheap or not the best, but this fucking optic is amazing. So Crimson Trace optic, but this is my pistol. This is what I'm gonna use. And this is what, if you come into my house, you're gonna be getting blasted with. And then my trigger is the Timney. It's a Timney Glock trigger. I don't know if you guys know that, but Timney has a Glock trigger. This thing, oof. That break is amazing. It's beautiful. And then, but with that light, it's a thumb activated. So then I just flick it oh, with nice. my thumb. So I could have it on. I could do that like every once in a while. This one is you can click it to have it stay on, but I don't ever use that. It's a support hand. Boom. Nice. And then if I want it, if I'm one handed, I could still activate my light with my right hand only. So if I got shot, whatever, my arm's out. I could use my trigger finger, um, but ideally I'm like this. So that's the light setup police officers are gonna use. As a police officer, I use a Glock, um, was it the 17? Mm -hmm. So I use a 17 just so I can carry more mags, but I love the 19 because I got tiny hands. So anyway, <laughs> just a, a chance to Oh, so what you didn't see before this is that guy was in the room and just shot the wife. Oh, shit. And, like, just shot into the bed and killed the wife. And then they, there was two of them. And the other guy was like, Yagatov, which is, I'm ready. And then this guy turned captain right in the dome and one of the other bad guys. Um, and you'll see later in the movie they wanted people to be found. Let's, let's talk about that for a second. I think it's bullshit that they're always killing people's families. Terminal list this stop killing people's wives so that's one thing that i thought about with this movie is it's almost to a point now where it's like it's with the, this is almost like a a, a full-length feature film version of terminal list because they kill the guy's oh, family almost like terminal list was supposed to be a full-length feature <laughs> film which would have made it fucking phenomenal <laughs> they kill the guy's family he's a former navy seal and now he has to go on a rampage to avenge his family yeah sounds familiar it, you really wonder where familiar. I'm seeing that from. Yeah. And obviously, fucking Jack Carr's book came out before this thing was thought up for Michael B. Jordan. I'm not dogging it because it's still an awesome movie. It seems really cool. But stop killing people's wives. <laughs> like, why do you have to go that far? Have you not seen enough movies? That's how your plan goes to shit. They will come for you. It's like, dude, yeah, just stop. Well, and it's like, if you, you feel like we need to see the person's family get killed for him to have that drive and mm -hmm. determination. Bro, you could back into my car and I'll have <laughs> enough drive to take out your whole fucking family. Like, you don't have to kill my fucking wife for me to, for my, like, special forces instincts to kick in. They think that they have to kill their whole family and that's why they're like, now it's time. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm back. Oh, my guy said, you back into my car. I'm going to like, in your entire <laughs> bloodline. <laughs> it's a fender bender, bro. <laughs> bro, a fender bender, and I'm looking for my piece. Oh, you know what I'm God. saying? I'm unstable, so don't listen to me. <laughs> but I just don't think that the movies need to take it this far. I'm, in all honesty, joking aside, I think that they ruin this movies 
by trying to take it that far. We're going to shoot. If you shoot kids in movies, just fucking go home. Stop making movies. It's not necessary. It's, it's almost like it's played out at this it's point. It's played out. You're trying to feel on our emotions, and it's disgusting. Nobody wants to, or needs to, for that matter, needs to see kids getting killed on screen. Just fucking stop. Please. That was their security detail. He called the police and reported the joke driver to have him pulled over. <laughs> Gotcha, bitch. He got in the burning car. Kill my wife. Huh? Who's the fourth guy in my house? Give me a name. So he just went at the Washington, what was it, the Washington Dulles Airport, whatever, Washington, D.C., and did this. Lit a car to fire and then started just executing people inside the car. I fucked with Michael B. Jordan, though. I know. Like, I, 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 I love it. How yeah. gangster is that shit? He's just like... <laughs> Lights it on fire and then gets it's in, in the, the fucking car. Be- if you think about it, it's fucking smart, right? Because yeah. nobody's gonna no. get in there. Nobody's no. gonna save this guy, and no one can see you. He- yeah, he's already pinned on one side. I wish he wore a mask. The only th- the caveat I would say is wore a mask, lighting the car on fire, lit it on fire, and then got out and then lifted up his mask because then he knows no one could see him. Yeah, and then, I don't know. Well, but I would buy it, and then he would just like pop pop or don't lift up the mask, but wear a mask, and then once you get out lift up the mask or maybe to be like a victim yeah to be like oh my god what happened what happened but i mean one thing he talks about and you'll learn is he says what does he say he's like i always have a plan or something like that so this is just part of his plan dude i fuck with michael b jordan i think that was one of the hardest scenes when i first saw it i was like oh this kind of outlandish but then when you watch some more you're like it's fucking brilliant i love (laughs) michael b jordan like not everyone could pull off being an sf guy but like I fucks with it. I think his dude kills it. Like, mm-hmm. he's yoked. He's cool. Yeah. He's aggressive. Like, it's just tight. He's man. not over the top. He's like, no. he like toes that line perfectly, yeah. in my opinion. He like, he takes the dialogue of their one-liners that are corny, but he can make it cool. Exactly. He can make yeah. it cool enough to where I'm like, all right, I fuck with it. All right, I got you. I, I, I got, got you, you, bro. I got you, bro. I wouldn't have said it that way, but I got you. <laughs> so, I, I, I mean... I'm thinking Michael B. Jordan needs to be in a lot more SF movies. Maybe, yeah. yeah. So I, I think they need to give him a hit at it, like at a, some some real shit. The problem is, I think right now, our main issue with Hollywood is that they're chasing John Wick mm-hmm. instead of chasing Lone Survivor. Right. Yeah. Everybody wants to see that like flashy, like shoot yeah. him up, like doing yeah. all the crazy what, shit. Who's doing the most tricks with the guns? Yeah. Who's doing the most takedowns? But listen, John Wick is already done. Stop trying to pretend to be John Wick. Everyone's trying to be, you know, recreate John Wick. You're never going to find the same success recreating someone else's work. So, you know, maybe John Wick was based on somebody else, but he came in hot and just nailed it. I would I would venture to say that it's easier to pull off a John Wick type movie than it is to capture the realism oh, and emotion sure. of, sure. a, of a lone survivor. And that's probably why they don't. Because you, you have to have a, a riveting story, yeah. like storyline. Some reality You have to have to some, some great advisors, and you have to have just an entire team and basically catch lightning in a bottle mm-hmm. to where everything comes together. Because I, I think that's like a once in 10 to 15 year kind of movie as the, far as Lone Survivor. The problem with this is the timing. Because John Wick came out, and then all of a sudden, a fucking flood of movies yep. tried to do the same thing John Wick was doing. I mean, what was the one with that guy that's a comedian that he was the he goes to work every day and then he all of a sudden he was in sa- he his house gets robbed. He lets him rob him. Deadpool? No. That guy? No. The one where he sees that the gun is empty. It's like regular guy or nobody. It's called nobody. I never saw that one. It's called nobody. And basically, like, he's this badass, but he gets stuck in this mundane life. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they do something. They take it too far. And so he snaps and goes John Wick. And then you have this. And then you have, it's like, everyone just, John Wick was so successful yeah. that everyone just said, John Wick, dude, John Wick, yeah. we need a John Wick. What so if, you're, you're a badass, you got out of the life, and now you're back in. Yeah, I'm you're, back, baby. I'm guessing I'm back. When in reality, it's like, there's so many other ways you can go with it. You don't have to just replicate John Wick. Yep. And Michael B. Jordan, man, that, someone needs to give him yeah, a shot yeah. at like a real fucking well-written dialogue. You know what's crazy? You spoke about, on one of the earlier topics was that, you know, 
this has already been done and it's kind of like recreating uh, Terminal List. Mm-hmm. This movie came out before Terminal List. Did this, it really? This movie came out in 2021. Ooh. Ooh. So now who's recreating who? Ooh. But when did the book come out? That I don't know. All right, so another thing. Could you imagine Jack Carr was watching this movie? It was like, yep, that's my next book. Yeah. <laughs> We got writer's oh, block. He's like, what am I going to do? He's got writer's block and he watches oh, the movie. He's like, hmm. hmm. A Navy SEAL. Wife killed. Wife killed. Goes on a vengeance. Yeah. Now we just yes. expand on that story. <laughs> Instead of making him black, I'll make him white. Nobody will know. <laughs> <laughs> he does a super villain laugh. <laughs> The white Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh! 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 Topo Chico. Topo down. Chico. I spilt the water. Oh. I'm not moving. Yep. All this stuff makes sense. Yo, son, gosh, damn. Look at that. Yo, that was dope. <laughs> Bro, that, that was, was I love that he scene. He was so shredded, dude. He looked amazing. But all those things that he's doing, they're not for show. There's, there's purpose. You could at least find some purpose yeah. behind all of it. He's taking his shirt off. He's taking his you shirt off. You can't grab onto his shirt now. I've been ho- I've been hockey pulled over. Yeah. Like I've had the hockey pullover done on me and it fucking sucks. You're dude. you're bound up at that point. Dude, he this guy was taller than me. We get into a fight. I push him. He comes up first thing he does is the hockey pullover. So the only thing I could do is continue to go with it. So instead of getting bound up like this, I had to keep pulling to get the shirt off and then start swinging. So taking your shirt off is it's a good thing to do because then you can't have your shirt used against you. If you do jiu-jitsu, you know that you could have a shirt be used to choke your ass out. Mm-hmm. You're, you could get the hockey pullover, and then you start getting pounded and you can't see. So you take your shirt off. That makes sense. He puts it in the sink and starts getting the water built up. He gets himself wet. Yep. Why did he do that? Because it's harder to grab somebody and control them when they're wet. That's why it's harder when... It's hard for police officers to grab crackheads, heroin addicts, <laughs> all these uh, when they're on bath salts because they're so fired up, they're sweating like crazy. Yeah. You grab somebody, he goes, foop, foop, foop. <laughs> it's so hard. So the fact that he's putting water on himself to make it hard to grab, then he's putting water on the floor to make it easier for them to slip. Because yeah. why would it be easier for them to slip versus him? Because they're all kitted up. Yeah. They're in all this protective equipment. It, they don't see very well. It's harder for them to stay on their feet. So, and then when he goes like this, and then to be so fucking yoked. <laughs> like this, my dude put the work in for this film. Yeah. And that makes me proud because it makes me think that he took this shit serious. And when they said he's going to be a Navy SEAL, my guy said, chick, chick, chick. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. <laughs> All we have to do is die. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. Let's, just, let's just talk about things. Let's just talk for a little bit longer, okay? Those behind us in Washington are not the only true patriots. Nah. So first of all, that's my guy from fuck what's the show uh with the kids in the aliens that's amazing stranger things oh okay all so right. first of all that's my dude from stranger things he's awesome and he speaks russian according to stranger things he does a great job at it and he's a total badass love him but my issue with this scene is if you walk in first of all that level of c4 tell me that that wouldn't have leveled that whole fucking building Bro, that was stacks of it. So he did have probably six blocks or so of C4, right? That's a lot of C4. But, dude. you know, one thing One thing I, I noted on this, right? And we spoke about this on the... What was the movie we did about the water charge? Um, anyways, we, we did uh, one of Den the... Den of Thieves. Den of Thieves, right? So C4, again, what we referenced on that, has a high RE factor. So that's your relative explosive factor. 
So your uh, RE factor of C4, since it's so high, it's what's considered a cutting charge, mm -hmm. right? Remember that? So you have your cutting charges and your pushing charge. So if you look at something like the Oklahoma City bombing that took down that huge building, that was basically a huge, like a fertilizer bomb, essentially. So that was a big pushing charge. So I could see how this wouldn't take down the building because it's a sharp explosive. It's going to cut things. So I, I could see how it would do kind of what it did. It might be maybe a little bit bigger, but I wouldn't expect it to take down the whole building. Um, but the other part is you, a lot of people might be like, well, why don't you just shoot him? Mm -hmm. But he's got what's called a dead man switch, basically. Ah, uh, okay. So he put as soon as he depressed that, it activated the explosive. So now, as long as he's holding that, the explosive is not going to go off. But as soon as he lets go, so like if he got shot and he let it go, it's going to go off. Um, so that, you know, be having the dead man switch on there. Okay, that answered see. my next question because I was like, I would just don't piece him. Yeah. You You're close enough for an easy headshot. Right. And he like, obviously he noticed that when he saw, you know, he, he's, he hit it. He's got his finger down. So now you know that he's already pushed uh, okay. the button. So now if he's sitting here like this, like, I'm going to push it. Then you're like, just cap him. Yeah, right? that's a good point. That's a good point because I would just don't piece him. And so as a shooter, you got height over bore, so which is the, the optic height over the, the bore of your barrel. Mm -hmm. And that close, you have a couple inches of height over bore. So you would just aim right at the top of his noggin yep. with your optic. Just your the... red dot would be right at the top, and it would just brain cap him. And he, was, he would be out. That's my first thought is like, oh, I, that's easy range just put one in his dome piece hit hide over bore i would aim right about the the, the apex of his skull mm. and then hit him in the brain but like you said i didn't think of the fact that he was already you know compressed yeah. the, the trigger and there was a dead man switch so you're you're essentially taking away your own time to back up and yeah. get as much space so on the explosive you know that could go probably either way but i give him a little bit of leeway just because it was c4 you know, it, it it was somewhat realistic, I think. I didn't like the dialogue, though. No? I didn't vibe the dialogue, and only because I know that these two actors have been in such amazing movies before. Yeah. And we've had this issue before. They're like, Ooh, one actor isn't the same in every movie. We get it. But listen, when you have good dialogue written, mm -hmm. and you show the potential of that actor, Chris Pratt, Michael B. Jordan, uh, the Russian in this one in Stranger Things, when you have great dialogue... It lifts that actor's ability up like exponentially, yeah. you know. So, but then when you have the same actor with terrible dialogue, it's like it's just not natural. Yeah. It's like he wouldn't say that, and he was the way the guy anyway. You got that cord. It looks like it. It's so flimsy, though. Yeah, it's thick. It, it looks like 550 that's supposed to be that for. Oh, suddenly he's got like a perfectly built charge. That was right. funny. So, so that that I like the I like what they're doing there, but I don't like the execution, right? No. So from a, a realism standpoint, what they're doing is what we call a silhouette charge. And so a silhouette charge, generally when we make them, you're going to pre-make it, but you can do a hasty one like he did there. But you're basically making a silhouette or a shape in a wall so that you can now go through that wall. So they had a sniper, they were pinned down, they had nowhere else to go, so he's going to make a hole in the wall. Um, so what he did, it, I'm assuming it was supposed to be deck cord, but it was so it was flimsy. It clearly 550 cord that yeah. he was like wrapping like this. And then all of a sudden it cuts to the final product and it's a perfectly yeah. placed thing with deck cord and like tape around it. Yeah. You could see the adhesive when all he was doing before was like flailing with 550. Right. Around. So, you know, what? maybe, you know, they're kind of backed by the CIA. Maybe they got some secret shit we've never heard of. And because the other part is when they blew it up, like it was such a huge explosion. Like deck cord is strong. But one wrap of deck cord is Wouldn't not going to go through a four-inch concrete wall like that. One wrap of deck cord maybe would be like for a, a house. One wrap has, of yeah, one wrap of deck cord is what we would use like for an interior house, house door, yeah. an interior door for a house. If it's an exterior door and it's wood, you're going to do like I think it was three wraps of deck cord. Yeah. If it's aluminum, you know, depending on what it's made of, like you're going to go a, with different wraps. In or, a wall, wrap is how many layers? So one layer or two layer. Yeah. So in a wall in a house, you would one wrap would 
break the drywall, but not even the not studs. The studs no. So it's like one wrap is not even going to get you through a normal person's house, yeah. which is drywall, insulation, studs, drywall. Yeah. So for that, I, I appreciate the the attempt, concept yeah. and the attempt because that was realistic. You know, I, I think you know maybe yeah. because of the movie. You know, they they did a little movie magic, but that was good. I like to see a silhouette charge, especially a hasty silhouette charge with the deck cord. But likely, what that would have been is a foldable data sheet pre-made charge mm -hmm. that already had adhesive to it and that was already made maybe not data sheet could have been data sheet i've seen them i've seen deck cord that's pretty dope where it's like uh wrapped mm -hmm. in like cool patterns yeah and then that's multiple strands so then point. you get multiple strands that go all the way throughout and then you could have adhesive to it you stick it and then you could have um a, a time initiator yep to where it's already attached and it's a three second initiator so what we've done with the concrete walls before is you would take c4 you would cut it into like quarters mm. and so placed around you would have the little quarter of c4 here quarter here quarter here quarter here yeah. right around it and then deck cord going between those yeah. so when it blows it'll blow out the big chunks and then the deck cord would blow out the weakened sections between yeah. Um, so, but the you know, data sheet would just be the lighter version of that. Exactly. It would be the yeah. lighter, more expensive version of that. So you're not carrying, you know, a bag with a couple pounds of C4 in yeah. it, which C4 is bulky. It's heavy. Yeah. And it, that data know. sheet is more expensive. That's why the the higher end guys get it because it's more expensive. Right. Um, but it's more foldable. It's easier to carry. You can carry a like a like the charge he's talking about like a ladder charge or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and it looks, they call it a ladder charge, I'm pretty sure just because of the fact that it looks like a ladder, right? And that's like data sheet blocks that create a ladder pattern. And then you, however you fold it, whether it's a roll or a fold, you could have it in your back, pull it out, slide it down the mm -hmm. wall and then with the adhesive, and then you could put it on an instant initiator. What's the initiate instance versus the timed? I remember the... The, you have three second timers. M M80? Yeah, M80 sure. blast cap. Yeah. But that M80 blast cap initiates both. It initiates the um what's the not the deck cord but the Time fuse? The time fuse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then so you have the time fuse is pretty instant because it's like shoo, bam. And then you had the No, the time fuse takes uh, it's slow the deck cord is instant the but you would have the initiator with the time fuse depending on how much time you want is how long the time fuse is once that gets to the blasting cap then it would set off what are the the um the criff had them a lot and we got a few of them but they're the pre-made three and a half second ones yep i cannot remember what it's called those I know ones what you're were nice about, and we didn't get those very often mm -hmm. but honestly i did not like those because it was fucking terrifying. Yeah. Because instead of like what we're used to where we run, we do our whole spiel to run our our cord and to make sure that it's un, um, tampered. Mm -hmm. And then I run it under your foot. So you step on it. I go behind you and I initiate. Boom. And then we flow in. By the time I initiate, I'm far away from it. But with that timer, I'm right next to the C4. Yeah. Or I'm right next to explosive and I go... And then I know that I have three and a half seconds to get yeah. the fuck out, but that was fucking scary. So dude. I, one random fact I remember is deck cord, the 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 rate that it fires through deck cord is thirty four thousand feet per second. So it's almost an almost medium. fucking instant. So if you run out deck cord like from I, at the Charlie course, we would run it out maybe like a quarter of a mile, half mile. When you hit it, you would just see a flash go. Yeah, and it was like so fast. And it was like. Whoosh, that's why I always see the videos off. of people doing charges and they go, they go, and it's like, yeah. it's instant. To yeah. me, that's instant. But the timed one, you're standing right next to the charge going, chick, yeah. and then you're running out. So it's, <laughs> it's last man. So you got security pulling on the door and then you have your breacher yeah. and he's going up there and he's initiating the breach. Well, the idea with that is it, it's a somewhat smaller explosive. Right. Yeah. You're not going to let off. Yeah, it's like a lock lock punch. Right? Yeah, you're not going to set off like 100 pounds. I'm going to be next something. to that fucker. <laughs> that shit was scary. Bro, if you I only had, got three seconds, not that long. Dude, I remember one time we had one go off. It was during a training thing, and we had a simulated casualty in the room. And so, like, I'm down, like, dealing with the casualty, and they were breaching a door behind me, and I didn't know they were breaching the door. Ooh. And it was, I want to say, like, a two or three rep deck cord, and, like, maybe, like, six to ten feet behind me and they set that thing off and even just the deck cord alone like took my breath away yeah like that other movie where he's just like 
And the guy's like, Rrr. that's how I felt. As soon as they hit it, it was like all the wind left my body. My ears are ringing. Like everything went to slow motion for a second. It was wild. And that is exactly why Green Berets are all fucked up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You <laughs> let that happen a few times. Yeah. I was like, oh, have you ever been blown up in combat? I was like, maybe not. No, but training. But training. <laughs> Plenty of time. I've blown myself up multiple times. But you that's get, how you learn. Be like, oh, that was too much. Yeah, Next no, time I'll do a little less. No, too much drill. <laughs> oh, hell no. He's like, I can hold my breath longer than you, mm -hmm. bitch. You're panicking, I'm not. So, I mean, yeah, he's just like, somehow killed or stole the secretary after knocking him out in a very prominent restaurant. Knocked him out in the bathroom. Somehow got his almost lifeless body out of the restaurant, into the car, drove off a bridge, and then you watch him die. But that's Michael B. Jordan, man. That's pretty sick. He killed it. I he mean, did. I think I think he nailed it, and I think the the like going underwater part where he the guy was guppying trying yep. to get air, and then he just already holding his breath, staring yeah. at him like I'm gonna watch you drown. I only wish that that moment, instead of him having a longer moment at the bottom, I wish that it was a longer moment of that guy suffering. Yeah. So instead of because he was just like, well, it's cool because you got to see that one where he's like. <gasps> And that's like your natural body like reaction is to get that breath, right? Because yeah. you can't breathe. And so that's how a lot of people drown. When they do that, they inhale all this water. And then, But it was weird because like as soon as he did that, he's like... <gasps> yeah. Like super quick. But, I mean, that's, you know, I guess expedited by how people actually drown. I would, I would just... That's your moment. That's the yeah. moment. It's like it's his time. That's his revenge moment. Yeah. So don't sell that out quick where he's like... <gasps> But then again, it's his revenge moment. But then you see after this, they do the funeral and he becomes a ghost. They keep talking about becoming a ghost. He disappears. And then a year later, he comes back and his CIA buddy, who was at the beginning of the movie, is now the director of the CIA. And he's like, I want to set up a team, a multinational, basically tier one counterterrorism. Six team. Underground. And he's like, I want to call it Rainbow. Ah, Rainbow Six! Yes, ah. man. So now it sets it up for more movies. Ah, that's so we're sick, gonna get to dude. see Michael B. Jordan coming back in and more movies. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six. Yes. Man, that's how you do yes. it, son. That's badass. Dude, I thought this movie was awesome, man. I didn't go into it with high hopes whatsoever. Yeah. I put off watching it for a long time because I was like, this can be another shitty Navy SEAL movie. Yeah. But I, I thought they did really well. There was a few things that were kind of outlandish, but I liked that in a movie, and it was yeah. kind of it, it was really good. I appreciated you know the whole performance. I liked this movie. The only thing I would say, far fetched, never ha gonna happen, ever, ever, ever. But somehow, some director somewhere is watching Beers and Breakdowns from gr <laughs> two Green Berets, and they're like, oh, we're making a movie about special forces. Maybe we should listen to this guy's. All I would say is, pull it back a little bit just pull it back do less <laughs> do, do a little less just make it connect make it all make sense if you can't think of how did he get his body from inside to outside don't just rely on the fact that oh he was special forces so he can right. do it if you can't do it that fucking guy can't do it Super, special Forces is not superhuman. He's not David Copperfield. He's right. not going to just like, fucking make him appear yeah. in a different place. Yeah, so like, just think about that. That's all you would say is the more realistic you could make it to where we could actually connect the dots, the more we will enjoy watching it. Because yeah. it's like, oh, that makes sense. You know, he had two people carrying him out and putting him in the car. Or he waited for him to already get in the car. Whatever, just make it fucking make sense. Yeah. We don't need to be so outlandish, but... There are moments where, you know, that outlandish is badass. And I think the fire in the vehicle. Yeah. And then getting that inside. Awesome. That shit was dope. That was awesome. And then to have him in the water drowning and watching him drown, that was sick. Yeah. The only thing I wish he would done is had him suffer on the way down. So as he's watching calmly, the the comparison to that is him like like have him look at him like <gasps> and while he's just calmly. Because we all have guppied at some point in our lives. We've all had most of us have had that moment where we've held our breath so long that we start the guppying, which is... Yep. Your body trying to bring your air Your body in. is trying to suck air in, and you're forcing it not to, and you're like... 
I don't think when you say we all, I, I think a lot of people, like especially civilians in the normal world, have not experienced oh, that. Okay, all right, so my bad. that's why, like, a you lot of the directors <laughs> probably don't know what that's like. Yeah, like if you've trained for, because I was training for dive school for a long time, and my buddy you know, Gory was training us through dive school, and uh, he's CAG now, and dive guy, and it guppying becomes a normal thing. You you have to start getting used to mm-hmm. your body guppying, and guppying is when you've held your breath so long that your natural reaction is to start pulling for air so your your body will start your muscle will start pushing mm-hmm. for you to pull air in so it, it looks like <laughs> that's the point i think where terrifying. most rational people would be like eh, and going to the surface yeah like before you even get there you get that cold feeling through your body yeah You're like okay i gotta breathe yeah it's like fuck it so gut being is kind of the precursor to sh- uh, shallow water blackout yep. so if you would have let him have that gut being experience poof 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 to shallow water blackout to losing it, to out, and the whole time he's stone cold watching him. That was the, I that love that been contrast. Sick. Yeah, that would have been sick. And then by the time he slowly, slowly, peacefully, which is more contrast, f- hits the ground. And then instead of just being like, doof, you hit like, tew, tew, more time, more time. And then as soon as he hits the ground, he's dead. He gives him one last look, opens the window, and then takes off. Yeah. That dude, that would have been fucking nailed it for me. That would have been sick. It yeah. felt a little rushed, and I think that that was a badass scene to, yeah. to, it to was, do. That it was ben. good, though, man. I, I enjoy it. Michael B. Jordan's a fucking boss. You know what sucks? Is that Michael B. Jordan was roommates with the guy from uh, that. I know what show you're talking about. I can't think of the uh, ridiculousness. Ridiculousness. Yeah, the okay. guy that controls the mic on ridiculousness? Yeah. He was Michael B. Jordan's roommate when they were both nobodies. Oh, dang. So his career went ridiculousness, and Michael B. Jordan went Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> fucking Black Panther, son. Hey, man, different levels of talent, I bro, guess. Bro, I would be heartbroken. I'd be like, motherfucker. Yo, Mike, put me in the movie. Oh, on, bro, I could be a Navy out. SEAL. Watch. <laughs> 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 yeah, please. Like, nah, man, no. Nah. He's like, nah, I ain't putting it on the line for you. All right, guys, we hope you enjoyed that episode of Beers and Breakdowns. It's a dope movie. Michael B. Jordan, I think you crushed it. I think you got a huge career in running with the special operations community. Hell yeah. Fucking nailed it. And dude, yoked, my guy. Oh, it makes shit. me want to hit the <laughs> juice, son. Looking amazing. All right, guys, we'll talk to you next time. Hope you guys enjoyed that. If you like this series and you enjoy seeing us doing Beers and Breakdowns, or vodka and breakdowns with little Tito's. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. We'll see you on the next episode. Bam, son.